Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Inside Out Alignment Show, episode number four. We've got Coach Joe Cusick today. How are you doing, Coach? Hey, I'm doing great. Yourself? Great, great. So Joe and I have known each other for a little bit. But before we get started, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with your friends. Joe, we've known each other for the better part of a decade, I think. It goes back yeah. about 10 years. And yep. We hit it off immediately because we had a passion for health and fitness. So, um, and you've shared your story with me for, for many years and I found it very fascinating. So I thought, why don't you go ahead and just tell everybody your origin story and kind of how you got to be where you are and so passionate about what you do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for me, it's been, you know, my whole life, it's been up and down, uh, on the scale and, and not happy with, uh, you know, the way things have gone and stuff. And then it was six years ago that my chiropractor, uh, turned me on to a book, uh, The Primal Blueprint, and that kind of turned things around for me. Uh, and since then, it's just been crazy. And, um, you know, with The Primal Blueprint, um, Mark Sisson, so he has a, a health coaching program. And so, you know, I kind of procrastinated. And I'm like, no, who would want to listen to me? You know, and, and I'm not some, uh, you know, uh, men's health uh, poster child or something like that. But then it, then it kind of dawned on me. I'm like, Joe, like, you're the average, per, you know, you're the average Joe, if you will, right? right. There's a lot of people out there that are not even remotely close to being perfect in perfect health, but there are people that just want to feel better, look better, you know, get a smaller pant size, et cetera, but just feel better, you know, maybe be able to get on the ground and play with their grandkids or something. It's just the everyday person. And I'm like, that's the person that you can talk to. And that's who I can relate to because of the experiences that I've had. And uh, so I finally, uh, three years ago, I went through the program and became a certified primal health coach. One of the best things I did for myself, I always start and do things for myself first, because I'm a believer of, you know, don't ask someone to do something that you haven't done before yourself. And so that's one of the things um, what motivated me. And it's, uh, it's really been fun the last, uh, last few years. And so what's really interesting, we were talking about how old you were when you came into this, you know, so yeah. tell us a little bit about at what age you had this epiphany and made this decision. And then in hindsight, you know, what that meant to you to finally make that decision to take care of your health and fitness. Yeah. So like I said, the, the book, I was 42 years old and I went to the, I went to the chiropractor. I, you know, I had something, it was the first time I went to this chiropractor. It's literally a mile from my house and guys in great shape. And I went there because like everybody, you know, they, they think they only need a chiropractor when the engine breaks, right? They, right. they don't change the oil along the way. And so literally, as I was checking out, after I got my first, uh, my, my first session done with him, he says, is there anything else bothering you? And I said, yeah. I said, I keep losing 10 pounds and gaining 12. And that's when he told me about the Primal Blueprint book. I ordered that book when I got into my car in the parking lot. And like I said, that book changed my life. But going back, growing up, I was always the chubby kid. You know, I was doing slim fast shakes in high school. Yeah. You know, I was always... I was always the bigger kid and, you know, it didn't, it bothered me, but I kept it inside. You know, I didn't let it bother me. I, I was always kind of the funny jokester kid. So I was always friends with everybody. And, um, but it was hard, you know, and, and growing up that way, you know, I couldn't do all the things like in elementary school. I remember when they were doing the, the tests for, you know, pull-ups and stuff. I never did a pull-up ever, yep, you know? Yep. Um, and so, but then I got, uh, into my twenties and, uh, right around when I met my wife, uh, about 25 years ago, you know, I lost, I lost some weight. I felt great. And I got on a, uh, a pattern of, you know, every day after work, I would run three miles on the treadmill and then go and cook dinner, eat dinner, whatever. Um, did that for like 18 years. That one book that led to countless books that I've read and thousands of hours of podcasts, articles, and whatever, literally a day doesn't go by where I'm not trying to learn something new. So yeah, and I think part of why I'm so excited about doing this podcast is I really do believe we can hear the same things over and over. We can have different discussions with different people. We can listen to different podcasts and we'll find that one 30 second clip in a podcast yeah. where it's like, oh, the light bulb goes off, right? Correct. And I've always said, if I can figure out how to get people to flip the switch, like, per like permanently flip the switch that says, I'm done with the old self and I'm ready for the new self. And you and I talked a lot about, it's not just a diet. It's not like a one-off, it's a lifestyle. So tell us a little bit about Primal Blueprint lifestyle and why it resonated with you. So I think one of the things that I tell people is that literally the way I go about doing this, you know, I've done every diet in my life, you know, and dieting is very difficult, right? You're, you're, you're having to watch everything, count everything, 
you're starving yourself, you're not feeling good. It's like torture. And, 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 and what happens is you do that for a period of time, you lose the weight, like I said, and then you gain it all back and then some. So I knew that, that I was tired of that. And what I loved about the Primal Blueprint was it went back to the hunter gatherer, you know, and how they went about their lives and how they, um, you know, how they ate and how they moved and whatnot. And so, you know, one of the most simplistic ways that I tell people is like, if you, I'm mean, going to try to help you eat right, sleep right, move right, and get some, get some sun, right? If you can do those things and really simplify your lifestyle, um, you know, I, I, I tell people you don't have to be at the gym every day. Um, I know we'll, we'll probably get into, you know, kind of what I'm doing with the gym now, but for years I was always doing it by myself, but I learned a lot even with that. Um, but I really try to simplify, simplify the foods, try to get back to as, as much whole foods as you can. And, you know, just like I said, a simple walk after a meal, like little things like that, or, or body weight exercises, you don't have to complicate it. And I think one of the best things that I tell people is, you know, I, I'm six years into it, but if you start today, don't think you're going to be where I am or how I feel six years into it, but you got to start somewhere. And I always tell that to people, start where you are and, and just keep taking it day by day and try something different every single day and see how you feel. Yeah. And here's the thing, and I'm not here necessarily saying Prima Blueprint is the only lifestyle oh. for anybody, but it's what resonated with you. And I think that's, yeah. that's what I want viewers to understand is there is no one size fits all. It's something's going to resonate with you. And right. I really want to encourage people to, like Joe had said, is always have this strive to learn, check out new podcasts, check out new information, because I can promise you something's going to click with somebody mm -hmm. or some piece of information. And it's, that's what we're striving for. It's that, that light bulb moment. We flip the switch and it's like, oh, that's, that's for me. And then you give it a try and then you adapt. So, so tell me a little bit about, um, your daily practice. So you've been in it for six years and you, we, we're going to talk a little bit later about the end of one, like you're, you're kind of your own guinea pig and you trial yeah. and it, but kind of let, you know, present day, June, 2022, tell us what your daily practice looks like today. Yeah. So the last couple of years, uh, you know, with COVID, I, I, <laughs> you know, being in lockdown, you know, you're everybody joking about, you know, the COVID 20 or whatever. I, I was blown away by that. I'm like, I, that disappointed me to hear how people were like, okay with gaining all this weight. And I'm like, I, I took it as an opportunity to really, you know, focus on exercising a lot and just doing as much as I could. Um, you know, my typical day is that I'm up at 5.30. Um, I go to a, a gym class. Uh, like I said, there's a, a gym that's about a mile from my house, which is very convenient. Uh, it's, it's uh, I, would, I would describe it as a high intensity strength training class. Uh, I typically will fast even after that workout uh, I will, uh, my first meal of the day, break fast, uh, is usually around what typical people know, you know, most people call it lunch. Um, so that'll be my first meal of the day. Um, and then usually after uh, working in the home office all day, I like to go for a, you know, three mile walk, give or take, or just whatever time I have, go for a walk because I, you know, being around, standing around, you know, on conference calls and stuff, um, I like to go out and just kind of move. I've gotten very serious about making sure that I get good sleep. Uh, cause sleep is very, very important. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a, a, a re reset button at night with your body and, and refreshing everything, recharging the battery. So I take serious, uh, serious, my sleep. And, um, so that's kind of a typical day for me. Yeah. Dr. Huberman from Huberman labs talks a lot about sun exposure and what you're talking about is circadian rhythm. So setting it in the morning with sunlight, low in the yep. horizon, getting it late in the day, low in the horizon. It's never good to have the overhead lights on late, late in the right. day. So I right. think it's, you're, you're right on there. It's there's, there's more than just the food you consume. It's when you consume, how often right. you consume it's yep. the exercise, it's the weight, you know, lifting weights, uh, moving heavy things, it's yep. movement, right? It's not overly complicated that you can kind of work these um, components into your schedule. So let's talk a little bit about mindset. Um, you said something pretty powerful to me, which resonated with me. And that is when you were a kid, like I was the, I was the kid who, right. The story we tell ourselves, I was the same, right. same way. I was the runt of my grade. I graduated five, five, 110 pounds. Like I was invisible. <laughs> so I, I empathize completely. But when I bring up mindset, um, what I want to focus on with mindset is, you know, things happen to us early in lives and we create stories about who we are, the type of person we are, our identity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And unless we're intentional as adults, we tend to revert back to that old 
mindset. When we're full grown adults, we still carry these stories of 10 year old Joe, 10 year old Mike, yeah. who was the, you know, who was something different. Tell us a little bit about how you evolved from, you know, call it Joe of past to the Joe of today. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I guess all those years I talked about where I was jogging my three miles a day, I never did push ups, I never did sit ups, I never did any weight training. I was just, I thought I was doing a good thing by running 30 minutes on a, on a treadmill. And what I've learned through all my training uh, with the Primal Blueprint um, in the health coaching class, um, I was doing chronic cardio. So I wasn't doing the right thing for, for myself at the time. But kind of the mindset that I had, like you said, I was always that guy. And I, and I but now, it's funny, I think about that when you're asking the question, when I'm talking with my, my gym mates um, or friends or whatever, I tell people confidently, and this is a fact, you know, I'm 48 years old and I am in better shape at 48 than I was at 18. That is a fact for me. Now, it may not be for everybody because most people were skinny and fast when they were young. I wasn't. Now, I'll throw a 40 pound weight vest on and go out and walk a mile in 14 and a half minutes. So it's just I, I, by doing what I've been doing the last couple of years um, with the new gym, that's where I, I mean, that's really changed my my confidence level because I am doing things that I've never done in my whole life. Yeah. And so it's interesting. I saw a post today on LinkedIn that I commented on, you know, Gary, Va Gary Vanderchuk, Gary V. Yeah. Yep. yeah so yep. he, it, there was a post about him whispering into this lady because she, she was saying I was concerned about my daughter in I social media, that. right? <laughs> and he said, just make sure you, your daughter is confident. She does the yeah. right thing. And, and my comment, I actually did a post to it. I said, you can't think your way to confidence. And so what you've just said the last few minutes is you made a conscious decision to start getting competent at things competent okay. as what is primal blueprint what's involved you got certified that that's a lot of competency you went through yeah. right and yeah. then you got into a gym and you figured out how to cook certain foods and so you you layered on competency after competency and when you have competence and you grow competence the end result is confidence you don't just think your way to confidence yep. there's it's the doer it's the daily doing right so yeah. i just want to make sure folks that are watching is you, you're not going to think your way to confidence but it starts with an action. It doesn't start with being perfect. It doesn't start right. with these huge, I got these visions of grandeur. It's, it starts internally, the inside. I am the type of person who will get up and walk around the block tomorrow if I've never done it before. You start small and then you build on it. You build layers of competence and then confidence is the byproduct. But you ended your, your, uh, your point there about talking about tribe and community. So I definitely want to talk about that, being around like-minded individuals because they say what we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And I really believe that I'm very selective with now who I spend my time with the conversations that I have to make sure it's positive and uh, it, it's like growth mindset. So tell us about your community, both in the gym and, and out of the gym. Yeah. So it, it, like I said, it's been a game changer for me. And for years I used to tell people, and I still tell people, you don't have to go to a gym. You could just, you know, the, one of the best gyms you have is right out your front door. Just go for a walk or do push-ups, whatever, you know, simple things, squats, air squats. However, what I've learned over the last two years since this gym opened and I joined, I've been going there now for two years, over 600 classes in two years. Some people, again, some people might think I can't do 600 classes. I'm not saying do 600 classes, but when you find a gym where, and this is, like I said, a class where we're going through partner workouts, um, you know, and, and we're all doing the same movements and, and, the beautiful thing is, is that nobody judges one another. Everyone's, you know, pushing each other to just do the best they can. We're, we're, you know, fist bumping all throughout the class. They keep you accountable and they push you to do more. Yeah. And so what that requires is getting out of your comfort zone. I talk a lot about um, autopilot. You know, we get up and we kind of go through our day subconscious. We're just going through the motions. This is all autopilot. We get up, we go to the bathroom the same way. We brush our teeth the same way. We dress the same way. We come to the office yep. the same way. And so a lot of this is talking about, you know, waking up, you know, becoming more aware. Uh, Coach yeah. Jay Laura, my, my last podcast was all about making sure his players had this awareness of what a self-image was. And I would say, as you're thinking about changing your behavior, if you're in a place where you know you want to become a better version of yourself, it's going to create, it's going to require intention. And yep. it's going to require getting out of your comfort zone because there's this thing called negativity bias, right? Negativity bias is you got to watch out for all the bad because 
biologically, we're just trying to survive, right? So with, with negativity bias, it makes it very easy to look at all the negatives and come up with any excuse why right. I should do insert statement, right? Yeah. So you have to kind of override it. And Mel Robbins has a book called The Five Second Rule. I don't know if you're familiar with it, yeah. but her whole thing is if you have an idea, if you're sitting in bed and you want to go out and, and go for a walk, five, four, three, two, one, just get up. And she said, if you wait longer than five seconds, your brain will find a way, like we just talked about, to yep. say no. So I, I do it all the time. If I'm sitting in bed or I like I live five, five, four, three, two, I just start walking. I just 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 start moving and get to where you're going. A lot of successful people, they all have morning routines. And and I think that that's uh, I know not everyone's a morning person, but I tell you, the morning, I just it's to start your day off, you know, and for me, I start my day off at the 6 a.m. class. And uh, I think there's no better way to start the day than that. So tell us a little bit about your this constant curiosity that you have to be trying and tweaking new yeah. things and new processes. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that I'd have a Mito red light in my bathroom? You know, it's like so red light was something that I was I was reading about, was intrigued by, and I bought it right. And I and I and I'll go in front of that for five ten minutes while listening to a podcast. I'm always trying to you know you know multitask and listen to podcasts while I'm walking or doing things yeah. like that. Uh, but, you know, you bring up a point. I, I do like to say to people, uh, N equals one. What I do, and you mentioned like Primal Blueprint. You know, I mean, that's just a, a lifestyle. But there's a lot of different ways that you could live your life. That's kind of the hunter-gatherer, you know, foundation. And, you know, how I go about my day is very different than maybe how you go about your day. But there are certain things that we can all agree upon that we should try to do without, you know, sugar seed oils, right? The bad things. You got to try to eliminate that stuff. And there's foundations of like eating food. Like my diet primarily consists of meat and vegetable, right? More meat than vegetable. Um, I, I did carnivore for eight weeks. Now, I had another gear in the gym that I never had before. Felt great. Um, but I look at that as like the ultimate um, elimination diet. What people don't realize is there's a lot of things that you're eating in your diet, eating and drinking. There may be something that you wouldn't even think about as impacting you in whatever way. And when you do something like that in an elimination diet and slowly add things back, you start to see what is impacting you. What underlies all of this for me is just awareness. Yep. Being aware of what you're doing, getting out of this autopilot, you know, ignorance is bliss, right? Just if you, so many people, I think, go through life, just, just trying to get through without thinking, like really yep. being intentional. And I've, yes. throughout this entire you know, conversation, Joe, you are an extremely intentional individual, intentional in the food you put in your body, your exercise, how you engage with people, the people you're around, light, sleep, uh, trying things, you know, what yeah. works, tweaking it's, we're here for a short amount of time. And it's Correct. easy to just turn the brain off and go autopilot and say, I just want to survive. Yeah. Right? Biologically, that's, we're set up to survive. We're not always set up to optimize. The way we optimize is saying time out, I'm going to start paying more attention to whatever it is that I'm doing. You know, in your forties, your muscles start to atrophy. And, and if you don't do something intentionally and it doesn't have to be pounding big weights, like I said, it could be, you know, uh, wall pushups, just something to try to stop that, uh, you know, atrophy in your muscles. Do you know, Dr. Peter, Peter Atia? From the uh -huh, drive. Yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. got this thing called the Centenarian Olympics. So yeah. it'll be a hundred. Yeah. He wants to be like, he wants the gold medal in the Centenarian Olympics. When he's a hundred, he wants to be able to be up and down with his grandkids and mobility yeah. and strength. And, you know, to me, that's, I'm a big believer in this idea of your future self. I'm, I'm posted a lot. I really believe we have to do today what our future self will thank us for, not be regretful about. You know, I right. keep thinking 80 year old Mike, 90, like 120 year old Mike. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you for doing all of this because right. I can see my great grandkids and I can still hike, hike and walk and sun and I don't have yeah. pain in my body. I sleep well. Like I just, yeah. I'm just, that's what I think about is, you know, I'm present today, but I'm making yeah. sure whatever I do today is I'm taking care of that future self. I think that's it. You know, whether you're shredded or not, it's like if your joints are healthy, you've got some muscle, you've got all the right work just because. You know, we have parents, right? You and I are similar age. Yeah. So our parents yeah. are getting up there and we, we, I, I see it. I see yeah. what, how they conducted themselves. And yeah. you know, sometimes it takes a slip and a fall and it's kind of game over and your life yeah. changes. And I personally have witnessed that. So uh, yeah. I'm super incented to make sure my future self is going to yeah. be in the best position possible. Yeah. The, the other thing too, is, is like when I approach my, my clients and, and, and friends or whatever, 
you know, I, I always try to simplify, like I said, but people like the average American, the way that they're eating and drinking throughout their life and, and not moving or whatever, you really, you can make some small adjustments, like minimal things like, hey, eliminate that soda and, you know, orange juice, like start there. Little things like that can make a huge impact, right? And then once they see the changes, then it's like they want to just like, you know, they want to know more like, okay, what else? What else? What else? So that's what, one thing I say, like, like I say, start where you are. Well, I'm going to have you back, Joe. We're going to talk about two things because we've talked about this for quite some time. And that is processed foods loaded with sugar, salt, and seed oils, right? Yeah. And we've got, we have an interesting backstory, which we'll save for that in terms of where <laughs> we were and where we yeah. are in our day jobs. And we yeah. have both landed in places that are so awesome. But um, anyway, before we wrap up, I'm just going to ask everybody to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you've enjoyed this video, share it with your friends. So, so wrapping up, maybe just 30,000 foot view, Coach Joe, uh, what do you want to leave viewers with mentally, physically, emotionally? Tell us kind of what your wishes are for them and what you'd recommend they do. Yeah, you know, uh, I've said it a couple of times uh, during the podcast here, um, you know, it, it, the intention, start where you are. Um, it, you don't have to, you know, go from zero to 100. Um, there are little things, little tweaks that you can do, even if it's just, you know, going for a walk, you know, and, and it might be a, a quarter of a mile today, a little further the next day, et cetera, maybe cutting this out, cutting that out, adding this, little things, and just be, you know, continue down that path and don't stop and just make changes that are for a lifetime and not like a one month, let me drop a couple of sizes, and then you get back to where you were. Make changes that are going to be long lasting, that are going to make you feel better and thrive later in life. Awesome. I've really enjoyed this, Coach Joe. So if people want to reach out and connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, you can be it on uh, Instagram at Health Coach Joe C, or you can hit me up on uh, healthcoachjoe.com. Um, and then uh, I'll provide you my uh, email um, that you can drop in the show notes as well. Sounds great. Joe, thanks so much for your time. I really enjoyed this conversation. We always seem to hit it off. Yeah. And I look forward to having you on again. And, and until then, all the best. All right. I look forward to it, Mike. Have a great one. You too. Thanks, Joe. All right.